What is up guys and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build. Today we're going to be finally taking a look at the Precious Scar Titan Exotic that was released quite a while ago and try to make a build based around the perk like we always do. But here's a catch, this is not a very good exotic to build around nor an easy one to boot. You may have heard from others how the exotic is too reliant on you or your teammates to die just to get the fullness out of it, which makes sense of course, that's how it's designed. But the thing about the exotic is that it doesn't really have a place in Destiny at the moment since a lot of endgame activities require you to stay alive, which is the point for most activities. Now of course players will die in content, that's a given. We can avoid it by being careful, but it will happen every now and then. This is where the exotic will shine the most and will come in clutch when being bombarded. However, in endgame content you don't want to die a lot, especially in content where if you die, there's a long respawn timer tied into it, or you'll get sent back to orbit. There are much better and stronger perks out there for the titans that offer you better survival rates that precious scars can offer, such as Ursa's, and although getting overshield upon being revived is great for circling up extra damage, it doesn't last long nor will it have a great impact that your whole team can rely on back to back compared to something like Ursa's or Heart of Inmost Light. Now from playing around with it and testing a few things out, I've found a build that works very well with it and complements the exotic when it's needed. Instead of us focusing on a build that works only on deaths, we could be focusing on a pure survival kit for us and our team as best as we can and through this, we can not only keep everyone safe and buffed with our mods and subclass, but also it will passively play within the exotic's range as we can still provide some use and benefits even after death. This is the best style of play that can make the exotic work without it slowing you or your team down. Hopefully this will give you an idea as to what to look into and maybe explore some areas from here on out. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like and a sub as it does go a long way for me. Starting off with the subclass, we will be using Code of Protector for all this all out defensive role in game and this is one of the many subclasses to pick when combining it with the precious scars. As we commonly know, the exotic's main feature is to provide you and your team a few seconds of overshield that will allow you to soak up some damage and prevent you from dying a second time round. As the exotic relies on deaths to be active, we can't build around this aspect as it's both annoying and useless for our teammates for something that lasts only for a few seconds. The key to making the exotic work is to combine it with a subclass that offers you support in any way or kind, since the exotic plays a passive role which for most subclasses and their abilities, it will fit right into. I have found that out of all the subclasses to pick for the Titan, Code of Protector seems to fit the most with Exotic, with the way its abilities correspond with Exotic's abilities as well, and its defensive perks are very passive and don't require a lot of investment to make them work. A prime example of this is the perk Defensive Strike that allows you and anyone near you to get an overshield upon charge many kills. Now as the exotic will grant you an overshield upon team deaths, I thought why not add on to this and grant your team more overshields while they're at it, for better protection all round. When it comes down to reviving the team members, if there is any enemy nearby, we can activate our melee ability and stack the common overshield that we got from the exotic on top of the subtree's version. This will give them even more defense on the go and they can then do whatever they feel is best from there on out. We then also have the Wall of Dawn available that we can plop down on a downed teammate and get a double overshield plus weapon damage buff at the same time. This is how I looked at the exotic when it came to building around it. I thought what would be best way to complement the exotic's perk without relying too heavily on this risky nature. And of course, Code of the Protector seemed to offer the most in what we should aim for. For weapons, this is going to vary a lot of players depending on where you decide to use it in game. For the most use of the build, it's best you play this in mid to high level content that have challenging enemies and certain encounters where your team will need to stay close, such as Nightfall Ordeals. My primary I'm using is the Nightwatch Scout Rifle with Steady Round, Rapid Hit and Explosive Payload and I'm using this solely for endgame content with champions such as Nightfall, Empire Hunts and Battlegrounds. With the Anti-Barrier mod attached, this scout will allow me to easily chew through Anti-Barrier enemies within a few shots and the perks provided are the best in terms of doing that. Rapid Hit will increase our reload speed upon crits made and EP rounds provide extra damage upon enemies which is ideal when playing on master level content as you want to do 
good damage against a single target, but also hopefully catch out a few enemies as well. Now when I'm not playing these type of content, I usually swap to a shotgun with great stopping power, such as Toy on Trouble, or High Abildo, a sidearm, with Wellspring attached to it for extra ability regen. For a secondary, I'm using the Imperial Needle Bow with Frenzy and Killing Wind, and this is to help with producing a Void Elemental Wells to drop a VR Elemental Armors mod, which we'll be using a lot of. Since we need a source to have Defensive Strike available more often, I am once again going to be relying on Elemental Well mods to achieve this. Of course, we are going to be using Charge with Light mods as well, with some options being available to freely swap our Elemental Well mod for something better. Having double primaries may seem dumb to use for most content since you'll run out of ammo quickly, but once again, this will help for ending content against specific champion types, and this season's Overload champions are very weak to bows. When not in these activities, we are then left with a wealth of void weapons to pick instead that complements the build's style, such as Retro Futurist for close range, Truth Teller for mid to long range, or Royal Chase Scout Rifle for close to long range fighting, which may be better to have as you're covering two key areas in one go. And you can then swap your primary out for something more hard hitting or even exotic if you like. For heavy, I've chosen to use a crowd pleaser with Kill and Win and Chain Reaction, and this heavy is going to be useful for creating elemental worlds much quicker from the elemental explosions being procced, and the grenade launcher itself will help with clearing groups of ads out easily. Its damage isn't really ideal for certain endgame activities since we'll want something with both high damage against small minor enemies and large boss variant enemies at the same time. With this being the case, I'll also be using the Leviathan's Breath Exotic Bone for its damage and flinching capabilities, which can be very useful against bosses and stunning them for a few seconds, which our team can quickly dump whatever ammo they have into them, or just run away. At the same time, it will also fill in the role of countering unstoppable champions with its eccentric perk, which will allow us to now fill in all counters against champions in whatever content we are in, and don't need to worry about switching out mods so much. For the stats, we are more or less going to focus as much effort into the strength and discipline area, as these two are key for allowing us to gain ability regen and back to back overshields when the time is available. Now, although they do look low in terms of points, please do remember that with the Elemental World mods in play, and they're given 20% energy upon being collected first time, plus 30 second cooldown, these mods will easily help further boost this area without the need of dumping tons of points into them, or needing a specific armor piece just to get the points you're looking for. In fact, doing this and then having a weapon with Wellspring is probably your best choice to pick in terms of keeping everything afloat, when things don't go as planned. For Discipline and Strength, I've aimed for 50 to 60 for a 59 to 51 second cooldown, and this can go higher depending on how much you plan to use your grenades and melee within the set. As we have the Elemental Ordnance and Armors mod in our loadout, we will be utilizing both methods of creating wealth as much as possible, so we can gain a constant cooldown on all of our abilities. For 30 seconds, we will be gaining fast regeneration which we can use to our advantage, and stack with other mods that provide ability energy from picking up orbs of power, or simply just activating any ability in play. Distribution and Absolution will constantly be active in the background, so that combined with the elemental mods will make your ability cooldown feel as if they're at 70-90 to 90 cooldown instead. If you plan to use your grenade as much as often, I would recommend you use the suppressor grenade so you can stun enemies for a few seconds, but most importantly, it will allow you to use your charge melee a lot more safer and effectively, without the hassle of needing to weaken them first. Now you can stay at the level you're on for discipline such as 50 like shown and rely on the mods to do the rest of the work for you, or you can boost the stat by an extra 10 to 20 points so you can use your grenades more often compared to your melee. For melee, it's completely fine where it's currently at, as this subtree has the perk called defensive strike that will grant us an overshield for every melee kill made, but on top of that, we'll also be getting melee energy back on final kills as long as our overshield is still active. This small but wonderful perk means that if we play our cards right, we can loot get a melee energy back to back with little effort. Now as we have covered the main topics of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they overall affect the build from start to finish. For head we have resilience, bow ammo finder and frontal wisdom mod. Arm we have resilience, anti-barrier scout rifle, overload bow and strike lightning mod. Chest we have strength. Because of Dampener Times 2, an Elemental Orders mod. Leg, we have Strength, Absolution, Better Already, an Elemental Armors mod. 
Mark with Maya Strength, Distribution and Taking Charge mod. So here is what I have managed to sum up with playing and creating the build. The exotic's nature requires death to be at most active for it to be a large benefit to our team, or else it stays obsolete. The idea behind it is good as we can utilise it in certain endgame activities to where deaths are more prone no matter how skilled you are, and deaths from you or your allies will still grant you all benefits from failing to stay alive. It kind of reminds me of the stag exotic helm from the warlocks and how upon deaths you can drop a healing rift that can be useful for your team. The thing about the stag though is that by nature it's a lot more fruitful compared to precious scars for the simple fact that it comes with another ability to grant you 50% rift energy back upon the user from critical health. This small but noticeable action pretty much puts the stag's usage ahead of precious scars in terms of practical usage and this is something I hope gets looked into in the near future. For the time being though, we will have to make use of what we have instead and this build as presented should offer you the most out of the exotic when everything falls together. Like I mentioned earlier, instead of building into the exotic, we should build around the exotic and its passive nature so that when the time comes to activate it, we can activate a wide number of abilities for more survival at hand. The extra overshield from our charge melee will help our team from section to section soak up extra damage that could have been lethal without the use of it and allow smooth sailing from there on out. With that comes a melee damage boost, health regen and longer lasting overshield boost from Valium Force and Turn the Tide subtree perks that allow you non-stop keep on the move tactics. And of course our super will allow us to play both offensive and defensive as seen fit for whatever occasions we are land ourselves in. All of this will be further supported by our void weapons and elemental wells that will boost stats further and cover all aspects of supports that we need. As you can already tell the build is designed around for endgame and has a passive role of keeping you and your team alive as much as possible and if failing to do so, we can easily come back fully protected and ready. This is honestly the best I can do in terms of making it work for the exotic since this perk is so risky to use in most activities and you don't want to be dying a lot to just activate something so small. Focusing on a purely defensive role will allow you to reinforce you and your team members for whatever content you end up in, which can go a long way if you're with a team who don't die a lot. Sadly, this is still not enough to make the exotic or the build as a whole useful in challenging content such as Grandmasters because of the implications of deaths involved in such a mode. As long as you play any content that's not Grandmasters, you can get a lot of the build even when the exotic isn't even in play, which is good as the exotic needs a lot of love just to make it simply viable. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like on the sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. Once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.